Okay, so we're going to find a stationary point of this functional here and with this constraint here. So this functional is S of Y and the constraint is this one here, C of Y. And you'll notice that they are both integrals. And the method we're going to use is the Lagrange multiplier method. Now, the Lagrange multiplier is just a scalar multiple, which is just given as lambda. So that's the important part of what we're trying to do here. We're just trying to evaluate our lambda. So first of all, what we do is we set up a new functional make, made up of this functional S and this functional C. So basically F of Y equals S of Y minus lambda times C of Y. That's the main part of the functional that we're trying to uh, work with here now, because this is our constraint. So we put the two together and that's going to help us get our result. So S of Y, we know is Y cubed and it's an integral. And our C of Y, we know is also an integral, but we know the value of this integral is A squared. So what we do is now we can rewrite the, our functional f and we'll just write it in this method here without using the y. So everything is a function of y. So f equals s minus a lambda c minus a squared. Because we know that this one here is a squared. So I'm just going to put that in there like that. So to find a stationary point, first of all, we want to take the derivative. Now, as y is a function of x, we'll need to take the partial derivative. So the partial of f with regards to x, uh, sorry, with regards to y, is derivative of three of y cubed, which is three y squared, and the partial of the c. Our functional c, which is going to be 2y, derivative of y squared is 2y, and the a squared, we don't need that because it's, it's not a, there's nothing to do with y there at all. So now we have the lambda times y squared, sorry, times 2y, sorry, minus lambda 2y. Okay, now if you use the Euler Lagrange equation, now just a quick recap on what that is, that's d dx partial of f with regards to y prime minus the partial of f with regards to y and we set that to zero well the y prime we don't have here so that's just a zero and now all we're going to do is subtract our partial here which we have this f y is basically the same notation partial f with regards to y this is partial f with regards to y so don't let that confuse you. This is just a bit more shorter to write. So now zero minus this. So minus three y squared minus, I'm gonna write that as two lambda y. So I've got my multiples in the front and then my y at the end. And again, set that to zero. Okay, so I've got minus three y squared minus minus two lambda y. So what I could do is, is put one on the other side. So I'll end up with three y squared equals two lambda y. Now subtract, uh, sorry, divide each side by y. Then I'll have three y equals two lambda. And then bring the lambda on this side. Lambda equals three y over two. And now I'm trying to isolate the y. The y equals 2 lambda over 3. Okay, so these are the bits we're interested in for now. Okay, so we've got a y equals 2 lambda over 3. So we could plug that into our constraint and maybe we can find out what the a is. So let's bring this down here. And let's work on this integral. So c of y equals integral from 0 to 2 with regards to x, y squared 
and that will equal a squared. So we've got our, what our y is from the Euler-Lagrange equation, which is 2 lambda over 3. So bringing this down here, we go from 0 to 2, dx, 2 lambda over 3, and that's squared, and that will equal a squared. Okay, so if we square all of this, we're going to get uh, 4 over 9 a lambda squared. So that's 0 to 2 dx, 4 lambda squared over 9 equals a squared. Okay, now we can integrate this with regards to x, that's fine. That's going to just leave us with 4 lambda squared x over 9. And then what we have here, we've got uh, with regards from 0 to 2. So that's our parameters, and that equals a squared. OK, to evaluate this, obviously when x is 0, it disappears. And when x is 2, we're going to have 8 lambda squared over 9. And that equals a squared. OK, so now to, we want to try and get lambda on its own now. So now we've got multiply both sides by 9 over 8. We'll then get lambda squared equals 9a squared over 8. So then lambda will equal the square root of 9a squared over the square root of 8. OK, so I've rewritten what we've got so far. So our lambda squared equals 9a squared over 8, and lambda equals plus or minus 9a squared uh, square root of and over square root of 8. So obviously that's the square root of this side. So we can just simplify this side up a little bit. So lambda equals plus or minus. Now square root of 9 is 3, and the square root of a squared is just a. So we could just write that one there as 3a. And square root of 8 is 2 root 2. So that makes our lambda look a little bit more simple. So now what we need to do is try and find our function for y. That's our goal. That's what we're looking for. Now the Euler-Lagrange equation gave us y equals 2 lambda over 3. So y equals 2 lambda over over 3. Now using our constraint this is what we got to here. So we've got two solutions plus or minus 3a over 2 root 2. So let's just plug our lambda into here and that should give us our y. So y equals 2 thirds multiplied by, now we can do these probably both at the same time, plus or minus 3a over 2 root 2. So now let's continue with the algebra there. 2 times 3 is 6. So it's plus or minus 6a. And then 3 times 2 root 2, which is 6 root 2. So now we just cancel out the 6s. So therefore our y equals plus or minus a over root 2. And that's our solution. So using our constraint, this functional is stationary by this rule when y equals a over square root of 2 and a is minus square root of 2. Okay, 